Hello there and welcome to this episode of the COVID-19 Talk. I'm Perseverance Yabangwe for the Community Voices Zimbabwe. We wish to express our condolences to all those who have lost their loved ones during this COVID-19 pandemic. As we kickstart this program, the Community Voices Zimbabwe would like to express deep felt condolences to the Nutre family for the loss of Women's Coalition of Zimbabwe Midlands Coordinator, Mimbai Nutre, together with their mother and father, they both succumbed to COVID-19. May their souls rest in peace. In this week's episode, we will be talking about bereavement support. All thanks to Tago Chiwanembra and the social work crew for making this possible and also inviting Dr. Richard Mafure Ranwa, a mental health specialist based in Australia, to help in the discussion. But what may be the implications of the COVID-19 pandemic losses on the mental health of individuals? Uh, the implications of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, is quite enormous, especially when uh, we look on uh, its impact on the mental health well-being of individuals, groups, uh, and families. Uh, according to Dr. Tedros Adhanom, uh, the Director General of the World Health Organization, uh, he says, and I quote, the impact of the pandemic on people's mental health is already extremely uh, concerning. Close quote. He continues to say, uh, social isolation, fear of contagion, and loss of family members is compounded by the distress caused by the loss of income and often employment. Uh, close quote. It is immediately clear, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, based on that assertion from uh, the Director General of the World Health Organization, that uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic is impacting on mental, on people's mental health uh, and well-being. And this is uh, resulting in people having a lot of uh, anxiety, depression, uh, stress, uh, sometimes uh, confusion and anger. And these become commonplace as a result of the pandemic, according to uh, uh, Brooks and others, 20, uh, 20, uh, 2020. Um, further to that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have got Many uh, uh, people that are result, resorting to the use of alcohol and drugs uh, in our nation in Zimbabwe and elsewhere in other parts of the world, including where I am based, people are having to turn to the use of alcohol and um, uh, drug as a way of coping with the fear, the anxiety, the boredom more so the self-isolation that uh, they have got to uh, cope with. And obviously, depression and anxiety uh, is on the rise as a result of uh, all uh, these incidences. Not only that, we have got people that do transport, uh, especially when we consider, when we come uh, to our nation in Zimbabwe, that uh, transport uh, uh, their vegetable wares, 
uh, to sell. They can only start moving after 6 a.m. due to the curfew, meaning to say they are fresh, perishable uh, products can only get to the market if it is Mbari, for example, they will have to get there very late because uh, of the curfew. And again, in the evening, they will, would want to move their transport out of town before uh, 6 p.m. for fear of being arrested. Not only that, as well as getting their vehicles being uh, impound, impounded. So certainly, all these you know, factors that I've presented to you uh, do impact in one way or the other on the mental health and mental well-being of individual, of groups, and of families. Thank you. Dr. Mafuranwa also discussed on how people can be assisted to manage grief associated with the COVID-19 pandemic losses. Uh, perhaps, ladies and gentlemen, to answer this uh, question, I will uh, begin by telling you a story which is uh, in the form of a, a scenario, a true case that uh, of a funeral that occurred um, uh, recently, sometime um, in our nation. And this is reported by Rosalind Sachiti uh, on allafrica.com uh, uh, news site. Uh, and here I present uh, the, the story. When 56-year-old uh, Majita Motiza, uh, this is a pseudonym, it's not uh, a real name, died three weeks ago, her loved ones converged at a Glenview home in Harare to pay their last respects. Described as a unifier by those who knew her, Mutiza's funeral work was no different. For two, for two days, her loved ones camped in their numbers at a residence before moving to their rural, rural home in Gutu. Word was that she lost her battle to diabetes, yet the post-mortem results later showed she had COVID-19. During the funeral work, the home was never disinfected and there was no social distancing. People hugged and embraced as they mourned. They also viewed her body. The following week, Mutiza's mother fell ill and also succumbed to COVID-19. Her niece and cousin who were at, at her funeral also died of COVID-19 the same week. Their funerals were also attended by many people. When they thought they had buried enough people, four other family members who attended Mutiza's funeral, mother's funeral also succumbed to the virus with several others testing positive. In total, eight people who attended the two funerals died from COVID-19. We are still in shock, said Mutiza's son, Pardon. In Zimbabwe, uh, funerals have been uh, singled out, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you know, just taking it from this scenario, a story that I've presented to you, uh, in Zimbabwe, funerals have been presented as super spreaders of the corona, of the novel uh, corona virus. As we see uh, here, one person uh, uh, died, 56-year-old uh, woman. But because social distancing was not observed, uh, you know, the protocols were not observed, they ended up bearing uh, eight people. Obviously, most, most of them from the, the same family. And the question that immediately comes to mind is then a social um, um, in a social context? How can we 
assist people to manage uh, grief associated with COVID, with the COVID-19 pandemic um, losses. I believe as social workers, one of our roles and responsibilities is to provide psychoeducation uh, to people. You know, just bring awareness to the people um, of uh, the impact of uh, COVID-19 and the significance and importance of uh, following the COVID uh, protocols. This is important for us, you know, to engage with the communities wherever we are. Um, and obviously, uh, in rural areas, we have got, you know, such other stakeholders like the village health workers. Um, they are also considered uh, frontline uh, workers, just as much as social workers are uh, frontline uh, um, uh, workers who should be responsible for providing, you know, education uh, that is needed so that people appreciate and, you know, do uh, their best so that we do not continue to uh, lose uh, most of our loved ones as a result of this uh, pandemic. Uh, we have the third wave now that has gripped uh, Zimbabwe and um, COVID-19 deaths are continuing to surge, leaving you know, funeral service providers like Mr. Philip Mataranyika uh, um, said, you know, the funeral service providers are now very, uh, very busy. Yeah, thank you. How does the current lockdown restrictions on movement and gatherings impact on the bereavement processes of our people? Uh, COVID-19, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, has left uh, governments of the world hopeless and clueless and in a bid to try and manage the spread uh, of COVID-19. Governments across the world have had to uh, resort to various uh, measures and strategies, uh, including uh, introducing uh, hard lockdowns on uh, their countries, uh, as well as uh, closing borders. Zimbabwe, just like any other country, uh, announced, had to announce its first 21-day uh, lockdown uh, measures starting on March 30, 2020. And additional measures covering statutory instru instruments were uh, further discussed and uh, passed on. As a result of uh, these measures, in particular, um, the lockdown uh, restric restrictions, uh, people's uh, rights, uh, human rights, basic human rights, as uh, Mavinga 2020 uh, uh, puts it, have had to be uh, infringed. These human rights include the freedom of movement, the freedom of uh, assembly. We have had to have uh, religious and cultural gatherings uh, prohibited and sometimes allowing uh, very few people uh, to attend. And many of these gatherings have had uh, to be done uh, uh, virtually. And funerals, bereavement processes 
have also been uh, affected with our government um, introducing you know the fact that the maximum number of people that can attend a funerals uh, is 30 which as we know our culture in our culture we do respect the dead we 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 converge to mourn uh, uh, we express our grief and bereavement over our loved ones so uh, these measures are impacting have had to impact on the bereavement uh, processes In his last words, Dr. Mafuri Ranwa gave further recommendations on how individuals, groups and communities can be supported to handle bereavement. Uh, there are a number of ways uh, through which social workers can intervene in the management of uh, bereavement as far as COVID-19 uh, uh, is concerned. Um, one of the roles and responsibilities of a social worker from a social work perspective is to provide presence to the person or the people that are grieving, sit by their side, uh, and comfort them. However, because of the COVID protocols, we are unable uh, to do this. So the best that we can do is to facilitate and encourage people to have creative ways uh, of uh, you know, uh, mourning their loved ones uh, and engaging with the bereavement uh, processes um, using, you know, gadgets such as, you know, the phone, uh, the online platforms such as Zoom, uh, you know, FaceTime, whichever way can be uh, possible, even voice notes. My say, there has got to be creative ways, creative ways um, you know, that work for, you know, different communities, different families uh, of grieving because it does not uh, help to break the COVID protocols and yet we end up having more deaths. To me, it doesn't make sense. So practically, there has to be an increase of, you know, telephone work, virtual online work, uh, as many as prioritizing our cultural and you know spiritual needs uh, are, are, are concerned as far as um, the issue of the bereavement processes uh, is uh, concerned. COVID is the new normal. It is here to stay. It is us who have got to adapt and adopt you know methods that do work and that do keep us. Uh, safe and certainly as social workers we have a role of bringing awareness of providing you know support to people that you know are grieving uh, to the sick that are dying uh, in, isola in isolation we have to uh, bridge that gap thank you Bereavement is a traumatic experience, and unless people give way to grief, they can develop a variety of illness. It is important for the bereaved to weep. It is good to have available a carer or a friend who is willing to be the person to tell the story of what happened and how he or she feels. Our condolences to those who have lost their loved ones during this period. See you in the next episode.